This video is brought to you by Blinkist. The first 100 people to go to Blinkist.com forward slash top tens will get one week to try it out for free. You'll also get 25% off if you want the full membership, which you probably will because it's all rather good. And let's get into it. We discover new things about the ancient world every day, and yet many of these antediluvial civilizations remain a mystery to us. Oftentimes, studying these cultures is like trying to put together a jigsaw puzzle with half the pieces missing. We try to make the image as clear as possible by adding a new piece every now and then, but ultimately, there are always going to be gaps. On the other hand, this enigmatic allure is what makes studying the ancient world so fascinating. The ruins left behind by these cultures often serve to raise more questions than they provide answers. Number 10. Chemun the Mitanni are one of the most mysterious civilizations of ancient Mesopotamia. We know very little of them, and what we do know generally comes from second-hand sources like the Egyptians and the Assyrians. Here are some of the basic facts we've uncovered about the Mitanni. They were active for about two centuries, between 1500 and 1300 BC. They spoke an extinct language called Hurrian, and their capital was in Washakani, whose location remained secret. At the height of their power, they were a major rival to the Egyptians, although they also allied at one point in order to fight off the Hittites. Their last known king was probably Shatuara II, who went to war and lost against King Shalmaneser of Assyria, and thus Mitanni became an Assyrian province. Hopefully, our knowledge of this elusive kingdom will increase in the near future by studying the ruins of Commune, where a Mitanni palace once stood. Archaeologists actually discovered the ancient site back in 2010, but couldn't study it until last year for a simple reason, and that's that Commune is underwater in the Mosul Dam in Iran. Iraq. It wasn't until the drought of 2018 that the waters receded enough that Kemun became accessible, allowing researchers to try and unlock the secrets of the ruins. Number 9. The Longyu Caves For centuries, even millennia, the villagers of the Xi'an Baihun in Longyu County in the Chinese province of Xijiang maintained that the multiple ponds that were situated nearby were bottomless. In 1992, a few locals finally decided to put the legend to the test. They pulled their money together and bought a water pump and drained one of the ponds. What they discovered was that the ponds weren't ponds at all. In fact, they were all man-made sandstone caverns that had been flooded. Moreover, they found more artificial caves nearby as they kept looking. There were 24 in all, covering a massive area of over 320,000 square feet. The Longyu Caves, as they are now known, are over 2,000 years old, but have only served to deepen the mystery of the area instead of elucidating it. There is zero mention in the historical record of the origins or the purpose behind this undertaking, which at the time would have been a massive engineering project. Experts estimate that over 35 million cubic feet of rock had to be excavated to create these caves. Moreover, the walls were uniformly covered in parallel chisel marks, which would have been far more labor-intensive than using a more blunt tool like a pickaxe. All this effort, and we have no idea who did it and why. Number 8. The Taulas of Menorca You've all heard of Stonehenge, a megalithic monument which has become one of the most iconic landmarks of ancient times. What you might not know is that the Spanish islands of Menorca, located in the Mediterranean Sea, has its own collection of similar stone monuments called Taulas, which are just as mysterious, if not more. They were built by the Talayots, the prehistoric inhabitants of the islands who lived there from the 2nd millennium BC until they were conquered by the Romans in 123 BC. When they were discovered, in modern times, only the vertical stones sitting atop the taulas were still protruding above ground. They were often used by locals for sitting or placing things on, hence the name Tola, which means table in Catalan. The purpose of these monoliths elude scholars, but there are ideas. They could have served as religious sites. Although plausible, and even perhaps likely, we know nothing of the Talaturk religion to confirm this. Or they could represent one of the most intricate and well-preserved archaeoastronomical sites on the planet. Some believe they were built to mimic the Centaurus constellation. One hypothesis put forward by German archaeologist Voldemar Fenn claims that the Taulas could be used to track the cycles of the moon. For the moment, the true motive behind these stone beer moths remains a mystery. Number 7. The Kachabib Stretching 93 miles across the south of Jordan lies the ruins of an ancient wall named Kat Shabib. Although it was first documented in 1948, in recent years it has been more properly mapped using aerial photography. Researchers observed that there were variations in the structure of the wall. In some sections, smaller walls branched off the main line, while in others there were double walls running side by side. The Kat Shabib wasn't very tall, only 
only three to five feet at the time of construction and was crudely built simply by heaping stones atop one another. However, given the enormous length of it, building it would still have been a monumental task, so there had to have been a clear purpose behind it. What that purpose was, well, that's still unclear. For decades, it was believed that the Kadsha Bib was built in Roman times, perhaps to serve as a defensive wall. Both of these notions have been dismissed, though. Remnants of ancient pottery found at the site predate the Romans and suggest that the wall may have come from the Nabataean period. Moreover, most scholars believe that the wall was too small, poorly built, and had too many gaps to work as a defensive barrier. It is more likely, they opine, that it served simply as a border which marked distinct areas, such as a region for farming and one for herding. Even so, they are quick to specify that these are merely educated guesses. The Kachabib, one of the works of the old man, as the Bedouins call it, has yet to yield its secrets. Number 6. The Underwater Cairn of Galilee There is something ancient and mysterious lurking under the waters of the Sea of Galilee, a giant circular stone structure measuring almost 230 feet in diameter. It's a cairn, a man-made pile of stones, which in this case is composed of countless basalt rocks arranged in a cone shape. All in all, it weighs around 60,000 tons. It was first discovered in 2003 by complete accident when a group of scientists surveying the bottom of the lake found it using sonar. Since then, we have learned little about it. Researchers aren't sure how old it is, how it was constructed, or what it was used for. Best guesses say that the underwater can is at least 2,000 years old, but most likely it's over 4,000 years old based on other megalithic structures in the area. Some think that the edifice was originally built underwater and served as an ancient fishery, while others believe that it was constructed on land and may be used for ceremonial purposes or as a mass burial site. Definitive answers will only come when and if researchers are able to excavate the Khan. In the meantime, we are left wondering what other ancient structures are still sitting silently underwater, just waiting to be discovered. And something you should absolutely discover is this fantastic Blinkist app. Now, look, it's not always to find time to sit down to read all the books that you want. I'm a pretty busy dude myself. I run this YouTube channel. I run a few others as well. Needless to say, I don't have a ton of free time, but I like reading. I used to read a lot more. And I like Blinkist because it summarizes the best points from a whole load of different books. There are 15 minute summaries which you can either read or listen to. Now, I just listen to them mostly. I uh, commute to work every day. It takes me about 15 minutes, which is pretty perfect because I can just whip through a book and it brings me all of the best points just like that. 8 million people are currently using Blinkist to get the best insights and need to know info from thousands of books. The self-help to business to health, whatever you're into, it's on there. I've been reading, or more likely listening to, Factfulness, The Snowball of course, Warren Buffett's book, Total Recall, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger's biography. It's fantastic. That's just three examples. There's a whole bunch more in here. I've really enjoyed it. They also have excellent curated lists where the Blinkist team and also guests have put together some specific recommendations like how to future-proof yourself or just some of their favorites. The first 100 people to go to Blinkist.com forward slash top tens will get a week to try it out. You'll also get 25% off if you want the full membership. Again, seven day trial. Cancel at any time. Blinkist.com forward slash top tens. And let's get back to the video. Number 5. The Hypogeum of Hal Safliene Malta might be a small island nation in the Mediterranean Sea, but it has a rich history that goes back almost 8,000 years. Moreover, it has many ruins and remnants of the ancient civilizations that once inhabited this land, and perhaps none are more intriguing and bewildering than the Hypogeum of Hal Safliene. Just three miles from the Maltese capital of Valletta, it's an underground network of passages, corridors, and alcoves which have been carved into limestone around 6,000 years ago. From then on, the Hypogeum continued to be excavated and extended to include a temple and a funerary hall and remained in use for thousands of years. Strictly speaking, a Hypogeum is simply an underground tomb, and the one in Malta certainly fulfills that role. Following decades of excavations, archaeologists have found the remains of over 7,000 people. However, the true highlight of the Hypogeum is the so-called Oracle Room. It's an oblong chamber, only 16 feet long, which has specially carved niches in the walls that give it an incredible resonance. Many vocal 
civilizations made inside the chamber are greatly amplified and echoed throughout the structure. Because of these unique characteristics, scholars believe that this room may once have been home to an oracle who offered prognostications much like the oracle at Delphi. Some researchers believe that the oracle room has an even more powerful effect on humans. One archaeologist said that a deep male voice chanting inside the oracle room could echo for up to eight seconds and would be so powerful that you would literally feel it in your bones and even begin experiencing illusions. In ancient times, such an episode while praying over the remains of loved ones would surely have created a rather otherworldly sensation. Number 4. Huaca Limon de Acupe Before the Inca Empire claimed the lands known today as Peru, it was home to an enigmatic civilization called the Moshe. They established themselves around 2,000 years ago and lasted until the 8th century. What exactly caused their society to collapse is still unknown. Many believe that the Moshe were victims of a super El Nino which caused decades of flooding, followed by decades of drought. Others say that a massive earthquake was the culprit, or it was invaders or societal changes that just caused the culture to implode. The Moshe are steeped in mystery, as they left behind no written record. While we can still admire their mastery of craftsmanship when it came to ceramics and gold work, we know almost nothing of the events that occurred in Moshe society. A testament to their skill as builders are the Huacas, stone monuments that were built thousands of years ago and are still standing. And as researchers found out in 2018, they still have secrets to share. While excavating the area around the Huaca Limon de Acupe monument, Peruvian archaeologists unearthed the ruins of two ceremonial banquet halls. One room featured two thrones facing each other, where it is likely that the leader dined with his most important guest. Obviously, these chambers were used for feasts, but they may also have served a much more sinister purpose. Among the artifacts, archaeologists also found human remains. From previous burial sites and iconography, it is clear that the Moshe were fans of human sacrifice, and it appears that the these ruined ceremonial halls were the site where many of their victims met their end. Number 3. The Danish Labyrinth A few years ago, Danish archaeologists made an interesting discovery in Stevens, about 40 miles from Copenhagen. These were the remnants of a staked fence called Palisade, which covered 60,000 square feet. They were even more surprised when they realized that their find was thousands of years old, and they were downright bewildered when they concluded that the ancient structure may have formed some sort of labyrinth. Labyrinth. So far, parts of five separate rows of fences have been uncovered arranged in an oval shape. Researchers estimate that the ruins are almost 5,000 years old based on artifacts recovered from the site, and they may have been created by the Funnel Beaker culture, a Neolithic people active in North and Central Europe. What has really puzzled archaeologists is the odd arrangement of the fences. Generally, palisades were used for defense, but that would not have been the case here. The poles were placed pretty far apart, so people would have been able to squeeze between them. More bizarre, though, was that the entryways for each row were offset compared to one another. Their size and number were also irregular, and archaeologists are convinced that this was an intentional design choice. Based on the evidence, they opined that this ancient structure could have functioned as some sort of labyrinth. Why exactly the Neolithic people needed one, well, that remains a mystery. Number 2. The Hard Knot Fort Sitting on a hill on one side of the Hard Knot Pass in the English county of Cumbria are the ruins of a Roman fort. Built sometime during the reign of Hadrian, this is just one of several forts in the region constructed for Roman garrisons. In its time, this defensive structure was known as a Medio Bogdum. It was square-shaped with a gate on each side, measured 125 yards in length, and had ramparts that were almost six feet thick. It stayed in use for over 200 50 years before being completely abandoned. That being said, at first it seemed like the Medio Bogdum was a regular fort just like any other. It wasn't until a few years ago that a physics professor discovered something curious in the design. The gates were built to align with the sun. Specifically, they were in line with the rising and setting of the sun for the summer and winter solstices. Of course, the million dollar question is why? Was it for religious purposes? This wasn't a common practice for Roman forts, so what made the one at Hard Knot Pass special? These are questions that are still awaiting answers. Number 1. Gebekli Tepe Just a few miles northeast of the Turkish city of Erfurt, it's one of the most ancient and most puzzling archaeological sites in the world, Gebekli Tepe. It is an artificial mound called a tell which reaches 50 foot in height and almost 1,000 feet in diameter and contains stone-carved ruins that have been layered on top of one another for thousands of years. The oldest layers date all the way back to the 10th millennium BC. They contain pillars carved and polished with skill by near 
Neolithic people, who lacked some of the most basic elements of civilization, such as metalworking, pottery, agriculture, and even cities. When, in other places around the world, people began building the Great Pyramids, or Stonehenge, or any of the other entries on this list, Gebekli Tepe was already ancient. Suffice to say that scholars consider Gebekli Tepe a game-changer, one that forced us to rethink what we thought we knew about the origins of human society. Klaus Schmidt, the German archaeologist who has studied the site more than anyone else, believes that it could represent the oldest temple in the world. Tribes of hunter-gatherers would meet at this complex and take part in religious ceremonies. A couple of years ago, archaeologists found fragments of skulls that showed signs of being preserved and carved after death. They now believe that these skulls were put on display at Gebekli Tepe as part of the cult of the dead that seemingly occurred at the site. The fact is that Gebekli Tepe might be even older than we think. Schmidt argues that ancient nomadic people must have gathered at this spot for a long time before they actually began building at the site. It needed to already have a special significance in order to prompt primitive tribes to start moving around giant limestone blocks that weighed between 10 and 20 tons. Clearly, we still have a great deal to learn. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do smash that like button below. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, check out our fantastic sponsor, Blinkist, who I'm linking to below. And thank you for watching.